Why aren't today's animals as strong as prehistoric animals? Anyone who has ever watched a prehistoric nature documentary or film has likely noticed something interesting. Animals were seemingly bigger and stronger in the past. From huge sharks like Megalodon, gargantuan serpents like Titanoboa, and mega-crocodilians, to enormous bugs, extra-large cats and dogs, bears twice the size of modern specimens, and even giant sloths. The examples are almost endless, and there are likely even more supersized animal fossils awaiting discovery. Today's video explores the veracity of this apparent phenomenon, as well as the probable reasons. Are modern animals really smaller and weaker than their prehistoric cousins and ancestors? And if so, why? Let's get started. The biggest and strongest ever. Before we look at why prehistoric creatures were more physically impressive than modern animals, we have to look at examples that support the claim and a few that oppose it. So where do we start? How about with us? Modern humans are certainly at an all-time peak in terms of brain power and intelligence. However, prehistoric humanoids had us beat on the physical front, especially when it comes to athleticism and strength. Homo habilis, our tree-dwelling ancestor, had a similar skeletal structure to chimpanzees, which facilitated incredible arm strength and endurance we simply cannot match today. Neanderthals, a more recent group of prehistoric relatives, were also stronger than average humans, with enormous shoulders and pectoral muscles that helped them bring down formidable prey like mammoths with basic weapons. Of course, it's more difficult to say whether prehistoric humans were taller and heavier than modern people because these aspects vary greatly, even among modern Homo sapiens. However, it's unlikely that ancient humans could attain the 300-pound-plus body weights we're seeing more of today because of obesity and steroids. Next, let's look at the animals, starting with the largest ever. Now, given today's topic, it's quite ironic that the biggest animal ever documented on Earth is a modern one. The blue whale is bigger than any whale, shark, dinosaur, fish, bird, or mollusk that came before or after it. This krill-eating titan has been measured at an incredible 91 feet in length and can weigh an unthinkable 190 tons, or 418,878 pounds. That's as much as 31 African elephants, the largest land animal today. A few blue whale specimens have been recorded at over 100 feet in length, but data on their weights is not available, leading to speculations of 250 tons. In recent times, a prehistoric contender for the blue whale's title has emerged. Parasatus colossus, a prehistoric whale from 41 to 37 million years ago during the Eocene, was much shorter than the blue whale with a max length of 66 feet. However, researchers argue that it had much denser bones than blue whales, which would have given it a potential max weight of 335 tons or 738,549 pounds. There is much debate about the truth of these claims, though. This is mainly because of the lack of supporting evidence and the fact that general length-to-weight ratios of modern whales don't correspond with the claims about Parasatus. While the blue whale reigns as the biggest whale ever, many other animal groups seemingly peaked in prehistory, at least when it came to size and brute strength. Reptiles are arguably the case and point for this. Along with titanic dinosaurs like Bruhothkaeosaurus, Argentinosaurus, and the fearsome Tyrannosaurus, prehistory was filled with massive crocodilians, monstrous mosasaurs, huge lizards like Megalania, and giant snakes like Titanoboa and Gigantophus. During the late Cretaceous, the world was even home to the biggest aquatic turtles ever. Archelon, which measured up to 15 feet in length and weighed as much as 7,055 pounds, was the biggest of the bunch. We also can't skip over Sarcococcus imperator, the largest crocodiliform to ever terrorize the world. This toothed Cretaceous monster could grow up to 40 feet from nose to tail and weigh up to 17,600 pounds. Titanoboa emerged a few years after the demise of Cretaceous dinosaurs. This huge snake ruled the prehistoric jungles of South America during its time, using its 42 feet and 2,500-pound enormity to crush the life out of crocs, turtles, and other huge prey. Megalania, which was pretty much a Komodo dragon on steroids, was the largest of all monitor-type lizards. Estimates put the massive Pleistocene-era lizard between 1,400 pounds and 23 feet. 
today, few reptiles even get close to half the size of their prehistoric cousins, especially if we're talking about weight. The saltwater crocodile is the heaviest reptile today, with a maximum weight of 3,300 pounds. The reticulated python is the longest reptile today, with a maximum recorded length of 32 feet. Now let's talk fish. These days, we have the whale shark, which has a body length range of 13 to 39 feet on average, with 60 plus foot specimens having been reported occasionally. However, most whale sharks would have been smaller than Leedsichthus problematicus, the largest of boned fish and arguably the biggest fish ever. This Jurassic marine giant grew to 55 feet long and could have weighed 98,987 pounds, or 44.9 metric tons. The largest prehistoric cartilage skeleton fish was the famous Megalodon. Size estimates for this monstrous killer are tricky because cartilage doesn't preserve nearly as well as proper bone, so no one is 100% certain whether the Meg was larger than the whale shark. What we are certain of is that Megalodon was the largest of all actively predatory sharks thanks to the one part of its anatomy that does preserve well, its teeth. Back on land, we have terrestrial mammals. While the earliest mammals to emerge during the late Triassic were no bigger than shrews, they eventually inherited the earth from the dinosaurs and went on to evolve into much larger animals. The largest rodent of all time was Josepho artigasia monesi, which grew to 1,100 pounds when fully grown. In comparison, capybaras, the world's largest rodents today, max out around 145 pounds. The largest bovine was also a prehistoric beast. Bison latifrons, better known as the giant long-horned bison, roamed wild and free in late Pleistocene North America. These mega bison could weigh as high as 4,400 pounds and stand 8.2 feet at the shoulder. Hippos too. Hippopotamus gorgops is an extinct species that was more than double the mass of the hippos we have today. Fossil evidence provides a platform for estimates like 8,800 pounds. The same goes for deer, like moose and elk. There was Megaloceros giganteus, aka the cervid Irish elk, which was more than twice the size of modern elk bulls and sported huge 14-foot-wide antlers. The giant moose, several say latifrons, was even bigger, though it had smaller antlers. Both of these deer species lived in the Pleistocene and were much bigger than any elk or moose walking around today. How about heavyweights like modern elephants or rhinos? Same story. No living elephant is as big as the steppe mammoth, Mammuthus trogantheri, or Columbia mammoth, Mammuthus columbi, that once walked the plains and woods of Eurasia and the Americas. Both of these mammoths could exceed 13 feet and 22,000 pounds, with the steppe mammoth having an estimated max shoulder height and weight of 14.8 feet and 31,526 pounds, respectively. We also have Paleoloxodon nomaticus, a huge elephant species from Pleistocene-era India. Estimations based on fragmentary remains go as far as 17.1 feet at the shoulder and 48,500 pounds in mass. These figures would make nomaticus the largest terrestrial mammal ever, but as of now they are treated as largely speculative. Then we have Paraceratherium, the largest of all rhinoceratoids. This massive, hornless rhino is believed to be the second largest land mammal ever behind Paleoloxodon. It stood up to 15.7 feet at the shoulder and weighed up to 37,478 pounds. Carnivorous mammals also grew to great sizes in the past as well. The biggest of them all was Arctotherium angostidens or the South American short-faced bear. Fossil-based estimates give it a max weight of 3,856 pounds and an 11-foot standing height when on hind limbs. Modern polar bears don't even reach 2,000 pounds. The largest canine ever was Epicyon. The prehistoric hound measured 35 inches at the shoulder and weighed anywhere between 220 and 276 pounds. The biggest cat is a little more debatable. However, most paleontologists agree that whatever it was, it belonged to the Macarodontini subfamily, home of the saber-toothed cats. Notable species like Smilodon populater and Amphimacarados cabir range from 490 to 1,080 pounds. 
The biggest panther-like cat was Panthera tigris solensis, or the Nangdong tiger, which lived in Indonesia during the Pleistocene epoch. You'll have to go back in time to find the biggest seals, hyenas, otters, wolves, and viverids ever. And lastly, let's look at invertebrates. Mollusks, jellyfish, insects, arachnids, and other invertebrate groups have seen their fair share of prehistoric giants. We have Pebasicana emanus, the biggest land snail ever, which grew to over 12 inches long and carried shells 10 inches tall. Then there's Meganeuropsis, a giant dragonfly-like bug that had 13-inch wings. We also can't forget about the 5.9-inch wingspan of Titanomyrna giganteum, the biggest ant species. Oh, and we almost forgot the various scorpion species that were nearly 3 feet long. Finally, there is the nightmarish Arthopleura, the giant millipede of the Carboniferous period. This horror was 8 feet 2 inches long, and scientists believe it may have grown larger. Why are modern animals smaller and weaker? A few reasons have been suggested. One popular one is that we have lower oxygen concentration these days than, say, 100 million years ago. Most animals require oxygen to live and carry out functions like movement, eating, and growing. According to scientists, the continued decline in oxygen concentration meant supersized animals had to work harder to get enough oxygen. Over time, natural selection favored smaller frames that used less oxygen. Another reason is the abundance of food. Vast expanses of vegetation and grass supported large numbers of big herbivores, which in turn supported a lot of large predators. In modern times, factors like habitat loss have also destroyed natural food sources, meaning animals that eat less have a better chance of surviving. Another potential reason why prehistoric animals were huge and powerful is the fact that there were too few humans to kill them en masse. Even the earliest humans hunted for subsistence just so they could eat, while natural predators like wolves and big cats tend to target the small and weak members of their prey groups. As our mastery of tools and weapons grew, so did our bloodthirst. We began hunting for sport, targeting the largest specimens of countless species for their skulls, hides, tusks, and the challenge of it all. Over time, genes for extraordinary size disappeared, and new generations grew smaller and smaller. Other animals were forced to shrink because their food shrank. For example, when mega herbivores like the mammoths died out, very large predators like saber-toothed cats were forced to hunt smaller prey like deer, animals that required much more speed and agility to catch. Predators that could not adapt died out and those that survived did so by adapting smaller bodies with more stamina. Ultimately, the truth is likely a combination of reasons. Different animal groups likely had different reasons behind their shrinking, and some of those were lost in time.